we wave high the flag of freedom as a patriotic reminder to never take our independence for granted. Fireworks explode into the night sky, lighting up the darkness, reminding us of our nation's calling in the world. One nation under God. We look into the sky and remember that for all the freedom we have to celebrate, we must never forget our dependence on God. It was by His hand we were afforded our independence. So we might stand for liberty, remembering He set us free from the bondage of sin. So we might stand for justice, for the Lord loves justice, and He will not forsake His saints. So we might stand for freedom, because we know that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. We thank you, God, for the beautiful gift of our country. May we always depend on you to sustain us. Our scripture today comes from Luke chapter 4, beginning with verse 16, about Jesus going to his hometown. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. On the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. And he stood up to read. 
The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him, and he began by saying to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, hello, Christ Church and all of our friends joining us today. I'm so glad you're with us for online worship. If you're on Facebook or the website, say hello to other friends in the chat, the comment section. If you have prayer requests or praise reports, send them to us. If you want to follow along with my outline, you can do that on the website or the Christ Church app. Tomorrow is July the 4th. Do you have some favorite 4th of July memories? I suppose we all have favorite memories of when we were kids around July 4th celebrations and some others as adults. When I was a kid, the 4th of July was a big event in our town of Great Bend, Kansas. For the two weeks before, we'd ride our bikes all through the neighborhood and around town to the area of fireworks stands to see what was out there. If we could scrape together some money, we might buy something small, maybe something new that we could go try. But the big game changer that happened one year that my brothers and I enjoyed was the envy of all the other kids in the neighborhood. My dad's friend, ran one of the biggest firework operations in the area. It was called the Big Tent. And it was a big tent on the outskirts of town. He came to my dad one year with a proposal. If dad would save boxes from his his business beginning a month before the 4th, so that people could use the boxes to put their fireworks in when they came to the Big Tent, then he'd give our family all the free fireworks we wanted. (laughs) Wow, what a deal! We helped our dad save those boxes and then deliver them just before he opened his big tent. And then sure enough, a few days before the 4th, we'd go to the big tent and he'd give each of us, four boys and my sisters, our own box and we'd load up. I don't remember exactly what the girls got, but we went for firepower. Firecrackers, bottle rockets, smoke bombs, anything that would make some noise. We'd walk out of there with an arsenal that it could have lasted us for a whole year if we wanted, but it was usually all gone by the end of the 4th of July. As a kid, July 4th was all about fireworks for me. Now it's more about gathering with family and friends around food and fun and remembering all the sacrifices people have made throughout these 256 years now of independence. My mom, my six siblings, and our families will gather again later today in Topeka where my brother Paul, my sister Leanna live. He has two boats and all the toys. We'll celebrate and have a good time. And of course, it's important to recall why we have this annual celebration every year. On July 4th, 1776, only 256 years ago, our founding fathers completed and adopted the Declaration of Independence, telling England and King George that we were going our separate way that we desired to be free from the oppressive tyranny of the British government. Of course, that sparked the Revolutionary War that lasted for seven years. But finally, we were free to form our own nation and chart our course in history. 
it's been a remarkable story. And we certainly are aware of all of those who fought at various times over these 256 years to win and preserve these United States of America and all the freedoms we enjoy. The big picture story is quite grand. Some of the details are not as pretty. We haven't always lived up to the ideals we've proclaimed. And we still are dealing with the injustices many people experienced along the way. We understand from the earliest beginnings of our country, there was a biblical and moral ethos that provided a guiding foundation for our leaders. More recently, we've been concerned as our nation seems to be drifting away from that foundation. Even now, some are sounding the alarm that our democracy and stewardship of our democratic ideals, government, and institutions may someday slip away. Lord, help us. I hope and pray we Christ followers will take note, we'll get the facts, we'll repent, we'll get on our knees and seek God's wisdom, grace, and Holy Spirit power. We need to be the best Christ-centered citizens of these United States that we can be. Our freedoms are not guaranteed and have always called for diligence, wisdom, and sacrifice. Well, as Christ followers, we're also aware that some 2,000 years ago, Jesus made His own declaration. It was a declaration He initially made in the synagogue of His hometown, Nazareth, at the beginning of His ministry. But it has become a declaration that has rung true in the hearts and lives of people throughout the world ever since. Think of all the people, leaders, and nations who have been inspired or impacted by Jesus' declaration from Luke 4, 18 and 19 that reads, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Jesus read those words from Isaiah's prophecy written 700 years earlier, and then He said, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. In other words, you have just seen this prophecy come true. For believers, this overarching statement points to Jesus' unique role as God's Messiah. Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. Post good news in the chat. So who are the poor? All of us are poor in spirit and truth and need God's mercy and grace. But we know God has a special affinity for the everyday poor who struggle to survive in this life. Jesus came to preach good news to them and us about God's love, justice, peace, and salvation. Jesus said, He sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners. Who are the prisoners? We are all captives, prisoners to our own selfish and sin-centered lives. We often know how to act, but we fail to do it. We all fall short of the glory of God and need a Savior. God has a great heart for all people bound up in the prisons of our own making. Jesus said, He has sent me to proclaim recovery of sight to the blind. Who are the blind? Jesus certainly healed some persons who were physically blind. Amazing testimony to the truth of His words. But all of us are spiritually blind. 
when our own arrogance, self-reliance, and pride cause us to wander away from God's truth and light. Many times we see God's truth and light and we're drawn to it. Other times we turn away because it shines too bright on our darkness. But we shouldn't run from God's truth and light. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He's sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind to release the oppressed. Who are the oppressed? Jesus came to release. You, me, and anyone under persecution, human injustice, or any heavy burden. All of us can be the oppressed. Jesus came to set us free from all the things that bind us. Post free in the chat. That's why He lived, died, and rose again, that we might be free. Through faith and a trusting, believing, grace-filled relationship with Him, Jesus offers freedom for all. Hallelujah! That is the greatest news the world has ever known. You, me, everyone. We don't have to have our lives all perfect and figured out before we come to Jesus. As we see how Jesus hung out with the outcasts and sinners of His day, we see that all we need to do is come humbly to Jesus, just as we are. He offers us the greatest experience of freedom we can know that impacts us both on the inside and out. It's a free gift of love and grace. And here's the amazing reality. We are free to respond. We can embrace Jesus' gift of, free, of freedom or choose not to. This is the marvel of how God has created us. We human beings are free to pursue God and His love and grace or not. I think it's a wise and prudent decision to trust and believe in Jesus, the witness of the Scripture, which is all about God's grace and the story of human experience, which is all about our sin and falling short, make a good case for the wisdom of us choosing to trust, believe, and obey Jesus. I have never met a person who has regretted their relationship with Jesus. For the person committed to seeking, asking, and knocking, Jesus says, the door will be opened, the voice of truth will be heard, and the spirit of new life will come. We have an ultimate source for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. His name is Jesus. He is the one who came that we might be forgiven of our sins. Amen. He is the one who sets us free from our bondage. Amen. He is the one who releases us to live lives of joy, peace, and fulfillment. Amen? He is the one who will welcome us one day to eternal life with Him in heaven. Amen? Jesus is the ultimate source for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Let's pray about that. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, amazing and loving Lord, on this July 3rd Sunday, we have so much to celebrate. As Americans, may we never take our freedoms for granted or forget the tremendous price paid on our behalf that we might be and remain free. And, O oh Lord, as Christians, as followers of Jesus, may we forever be grateful for the sacrifice, for the ultimate price that He paid on the cross, that we might be free spiritually in every way. He is the one who suffered, died, and was buried, that we might have forgiveness, new life, and the blessings of the Holy Spirit at work within us, now and forever. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. Amen. 
Well, today, as an act of praise and remembrance of our freedom in Christ, we're going to celebrate Holy Communion. So prepare your elements there at home, bread and juice, whatever you plan to use. Before we come to the communion table, remember, we examine our hearts and we acknowledge our sin and need of forgiveness. Let me share this prayer of confession. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We've not done your will. We've broken your law. We've rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We've not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, hear this good news. Christ died for you and me while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. You are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. So, on the night that He gave Himself up for us, we remember that Jesus gathered with His disciples. He took bread. He gave thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to His disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is My body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of Me. When the supper was over, He took the cup. He gave thanks, gave it to His disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Jesus was pointing to the forgiveness he was about to win for us on the cross. He would offer himself up as the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Because of His holy sacrifice, God extends forgiveness to us and calls us to forgive one another also. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Christ Jesus, we, Lord, offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. And share it with me if you know it. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Let's say that again. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit, Lord, on us gathered here online and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by His blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast in His heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. You may take your bread now and prepare to receive it. This is the body of Christ broken for you. And now, take the juice. This is the blood of Christ poured out for you. Amen. Hey, in gratitude, we have remembered and celebrated the great victory that Jesus Christ won on the cross for you and me. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. I hope your heart is filled with joy and gratitude again today because of everything God has done for you through His Son, Jesus Christ. I pray that you're also grateful for the many blessings we enjoy as Americans and will join me in recommitting your life to Christ and to His mission in our land. 
Hey, if you have questions about the message, I want to hear from you. If you'd like to visit more about having this new life in Jesus Christ, I'd love to visit with you about that too. Get a hold of me. If you have prayer requests or praise reports, again, send them to us. We, we want to hear from you. We want to pray for you. Thank you for your generosity. Your ongoing gifts are helping us care for and reach new people for Jesus and His kingdom. You can go online. You can use the app. You can go to the website anytime to make contributions. Be sure to take advantage of our discipleship opportunities and find all the information you need on our website, cumctulsa.com. God bless you today, and God bless America. Remember, Jesus is the one who gave Himself up as a ransom for you and me. He paid the price so that we could be free. For now, who do you know that needs this same freedom from God that comes through faith in Jesus? I don't really have a joke for today. You don't? No, but I was reading a news article and it said that there was this guy who was teaching himself to learn origami backwards. Wow. Yeah, they didn't say a whole lot, but they said there'd be more as the story unfolded. Every stage of parenting has its challenges. We have a monthly support group for hurting parents of adult children that will meet on July 10th at 5 p.m. Contact Kathy Feist or Jill Prey for more information on how to participate. On the second Saturday of each month, the men of Christ Church and their guests join together for breakfast, a unique speaker, and fellowship. Make this group a part of your community at Christ Church by joining them Saturday, July 9th at 8 a.m. Do you have questions about our church, its beliefs, history, or want to know more about becoming a member? The next Discover CUMC will be July 17th. Contact the church office for more information. You can find all of this information and more on our website, cumctulsa.com.